Hello guys, good evening. So generally I'm facing all these challenges when I'm taking these seminars. Either my session will be something before break, uh, for the lunch, or something like this. Okay, so what I'm planning to do is, uh, we are almost close to 35 minutes backlog, right? We supposed to have my session at 2.50 and end up at 3.10, so that's the clock. Now we are at 3.20. Um, so what I'll do is I'll quickly wrap up my session as fast as I can um, and I'll also give adequate time for question and answers. So that's the thing. Um, um, good evening guys again. So open source, whether open source software is risky. So that's the topic given by Harish. Okay. So. Um, my focus areas will be, what is that I'm trying to convey here? What, what open source is creating value? And some brief examples, what are the open source to keep up? And then focus on why part, it's a value capturing model. Uh, why, why, why should we think about that? Uh, why should we adopt that? And value delivery, what are the ways we should perform while we are taking up the open source? And finally, um, I may not take time now for a case study because of um, uh, we, are, we are overrunning, right? Um, before that, um, just wanted to ask this question. So how many of you here are reasonably aware in terms of your awareness level in open source in the scale of one to five where five is the high? So any, how much awareness I can say? Maybe. More than three? <coughs> How many hands are up? More than three? Okay. Couple. Three. Yeah. Okay. So the rest of... Oh, okay. Oh. Thank you. Thank you for being candid. And probably my expectation um, from this session is to go through the segment of one to three or zero to three. So those are the audience which I am focusing on this. Um, very quickly, what is that I would like to do in the next 10 or 15 minutes, okay? It's supposed to be 35 minutes, but I'm shrinking myself. Um, what is that we are trying to create a value and how should we capture from a business point of view where you are leading your organizations? What are the generic mistakes we do while we are taking the decisions? And what are the points we should ponder uh, while you are considering on the um, open source software and then a sort of case study? I'm putting my disclaimer very clearly. So these are all the ones which I'm sharing it based on my experience and my learning from the web. Uh, so there is nothing, um, you, you, you may not take it as a sacrosanct in terms of taking a complete decision. Probably you have to consult the right um, experts in person in analysis with whatever the scenario you are playing with. So this can be taken in a sort of high level, but uh, based on your situations, you have to do a little bit Tailor made. Okay? So, quickly, teasers. Couple of teasers I'm putting. The reason is just to bring you uh, to the normal forum. Open source is typically um, to reduce development cost. Because while you're developing a solution, the huge amount of money goes for developing the solution, investing on the developers. And next is free internal developers to do work on high order risks. When you are running a big company, uh, either small, medium, or large, uh, there is a lot of amount uh, you, are, uh, uh, you are investing on uh, developers, right? So is there a way we can adopt few open source tools, thereby you can put the segment of those high classified skilled workers on a better critical task? And then accelerating time to market. Whenever you don't have time and there is a sort of uh, business pressure, you can always look for these open source tools where you can get the best out of it. There are calculated risks we can always take. So that's the key thing. And this guy is a Black Deck software president and CEO. So a very trusted sort of words he had said, according to me. So open source is the way the applications are being developed today. That's his statement. And I feel that he is reasonably OK. In the sense, his, his point is good. And the second one is from Paul from North Beach. This is also one of the company where they are adopting the open source softwares in a predominant way. And 
uh, they also one of the advocates for the open source software systems in a pervasive manner, right? And what he is saying is unequivocally the in engine of innovation. He he feels that o G, uh, op open source software is a place where there is a lot of innovation happens mainly because of the embracement of its technology to accelerate the new age operating systems as per the business needs, cloud, big data, IoT, all these integrations happen very fast with the, op with the open source systems. So these are the people who are providing the solutions, adopt the open source in a most faster pace. The amount of pace you are seeing in Airbnb or Netflix or whatever the new age tool which you are using, they are always uh, also utilizing the open source tools, okay? So now, before getting into the value creation model, uh, we have to first understand what is this we are talking about, right? So, so the first point, which th this is one of the key slides which I, I want to spend some time here. Um, it's a computer software. Uh, the open source software is nothing but a computer software, and the source code is made available with a license. There could be someone who can able to provide you that, and the moment you buy that license, uh, the copy holder provides the right to study, to change, and also to distribute that software to anyone for any purpose, okay? It's, it's reasonably the well-defined statement, which I could take it from Wiki, okay? Few couple of points is, open source may be developed in a collaborative public manner. So you can have a collaboration forum, community forums, you can run it, and then you can develop it. And then, it's the most prominent example for open source development, so open source software. So a um, couple of few points is open source drives technology and development forward. This is one of the key outcome in terms of open source software. And the adoption worldwide, it's not just being taken care of by uh, the startups, it is also well taken by the behemoths, right? Whether it is Apple or Google or Microsoft, all these guys, they are all using open source strategically, okay? Um, so the final one, all of these organizations rely on for innovate to reduce development cost, as I mentioned to you, and increase their speed, of, speed to market. And it has to be managed well through the proper governance, security policies, and procedures. So that's the key takeaway here. So the future for the open source is having more possibilities, more hope. So this is the sort of inference I'm getting while I'm studying through this, I'm working on this, okay? Quickly moving on, a sort of very high level thing. It, it started at 2008 where open source is, open source is existing for prior to 2008 as well, but the sort of fame started somewhere there, and then it gained a lot of momentum after, uh, through operating systems, Linux, Red Hat, and stuff. And then early 2013, you started seeing a lot of trends in uh, software, where many uh, software players started utilizing this open source software, and now most of the breakthrough uh, segments are all having the open source participation in a more deeper way. So the key takeaway here is open source software is obtuous and uh, in the world of software. So you cannot uh, run, if, if you want to really run a real-time 2.0 sort of environments uh, in, in web and in mobile environment, you, you can't just, just like that eliminate this. Um, open source software options, okay? Um, now coming into the value uh, creation model, just three key points which I would like to focus on. Efficiency, interoperability, innovation, okay? These are the key uh, values while you're adopting for the open source software. So the, the survey conducted by these two people, Northbridge and uh, Blackbuck, so they believed and they got a, realistic feedbacks that 90% of the response, respondents who are working on this open source um, uh, attest that uh, na they all believe that it improves the efficiency, interoperability, and innovation, okay? Um, and next one is, uh, in, in specific to the speed of the application development, because that is one of the classic um, rewards while you're opting for the open source. So. 65% of these companies, um, uh, they are believing that OS has increased uh, their application, speed of the application development, where it is one of the key factors in many companies which is delaying the go-to-market strategies. And then, around 65% believe that it 
it leveraged US OSS to speed their application and then around 55% in their infrastructure. Infrastructure could be something like uh, um, uh, the ones uh, which are prominent examples are Red Hat and uh, Linux and so many other things. So key takeaway, uh, if, if you see here in this slide, it speeds up the application development process. So when you have a need, you have to start thinking about, hey, is there any open source tools available to address the business need? Next is, um, you, can, you can start becoming more strategic. Um, the strategic things can uh, form in three in a categories. Um, so one is the competitive. What is your unique uh, selling point for your business model, which can be taken the use of uh, open source software? And then it will give you the unlocking from the vendor. You are, you are confined to a vendor where here you don't have to. You can buy the license, you can tweak a bit based on the thing, you can create your unique proposition model. So that induces the creativity and that gives a sense of accomplishment as well. And then quality. If you have a good resource, if you have a good process, you can always enha enhance the quality as you move on. And then the ability to customize and fix. Many times if you don't have the source code, uh, you will be, your hands are tied. And with the proliferation of a lot of cards application, uh, with the AMC tied to that. So you, you'll always have the dependency on somebody else to fix the problem. Um, so that thing is addressed here. Okay, this slide is more about a sort of, you know, um, another thesis slide in between. So many people, so this is a, the left is on 2015 and right is on the 2016. So many people who are working on this open source things. And I don't want to um, uh, go in deep, okay? The, the crux is too many players, where to focus? So, and now a few examples, um, Bitcoin, Orange, Firefox, 3D Slicer, Wireshark. I just picked up few things which are very prominent. Many of the people may have an opportunity to glimpse through. And then in the other side, I picked up companies who are really embracing this. Google, Apple, Microsoft, Wipro, Infosys, all these guys are part of this uh, forum. So there is a sort of, you know, huge energy uh, and aura which is going across this OSS circle. So that's the reason of it. This is uh, which I am trying to focus to give you a sort of how much depth and width it is covering. This, this open source softwares are covering. It has in, in all gamuts, audio, bioinformatics, configuration management, device drivers, geophysics, health, mathematics, television, video games, web application, you name it, you will have it. There are umpteen number of open source softwares available. Uh, and all you have to do is do a right risk assessment based on the business requirements. Um, so there are various license types here available. I'm not going to drill deep into it because of the lack of time, but it's interesting and most in important while you're deciding what is the sort of um, approach you're going to take. Okay, here is another slide which I would like to spend one or two minutes, um, cost-benefit analysis. I try to make it as nimble as possible. I took three key points and try to see what is that we should do. So the first point is relatively, letter, l relatively lesser capital investment. The reason why I am saying relatively lesser capital investment for OSS is you need to have a very quality workforce. Otherwise, you know, you'll go for robs. So uh, that's extremely important in terms of uh, thing because you don't have to invest on software. Uh, you may have to invest on people. So in the benefit is you will have a lesser resistance in terms of buying the uh, uh, approvals from management. So the risk here, what you are trying to make, the cost and benefit balance is the proper solution design, documentation, and critical employee reten uh, retention and backup strategy. What is that you have? And then the second point which I would like to focus here is faster go to mar market helps you to save the time and money, okay? Uh, so the benefit is, of course, the improved revenue, the competitive edge, and then the risk which you have to play with that is anticipate the early mover risks through refined beachhead assessment. What is the target you are trying to make and what are the players already available in the GSS market, o, uh, OSS market, and then how are you defining that? So, and the third one is embracing the latest innovative solutions readily for open source community. So you can't get everything for free, right? You have to start contributing back as well. Through your competitive workforce, you may have to start doing that. So, so project IT as a driver and pillar champions in your uh, in a company, and it also brings you top line, right? So robust information security XP assurance while you are embracing the latest innovations via a framework with a secure coding practice can help you handle that risk effectively. So 
typical my sort of observation is a careful CBA ensure probability of OSS success in a higher rate. Okay. Um, so here are the few things, the last set of wing which I'm trying to rush through. This slide, what I'm trying to in, uh, do, when you are trying to decide uh, about the open source software, so you have to be extremely careful on your own entire business chain and also the IT chain. So by knocking some doors, you should not ultimately you know, fall prey to the risk. So that is the sort of message which I'm trying to message here. Improper adaption leads to costly damage. It can, it can have the potential to destroy. So the second point, uh, this is on the value delivery, uh, how, how you sustain, so that's the point, okay? So this is the beauty of the people, right? Absence of dedicated resources to manage the OSS project will kill you, okay? So that's the sort of indication of the failure. The third one, uh, this is something interesting which I found it. So it's a sort of, uh, oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. So what is that? So um, and, and if improper OSS governance leads to increase in development cost. If you're not properly ma managing the overall thing, you will, you will put the banner that, okay, this is the time to market, this is the target we are trying to say, and then probably, you know, if you don't manage it well, so you will end up at a problem. Um, so next one is uh, a sort of, you know, tri-spectrum. This is to focus on the risks uh, in terms of security assessment, okay? Uh, glaring facts, 50% of the companies believe that uh, they are not uh, doing a proper risk assessment of the cloud. And then 47 companies, 47% of the companies, they believe that uh, they have not done the proper uh, uh, analysis on the open source code. They are not tracking their open source code. And then around 50% um, believe that they don't know in the, in the, in the total. So typically, the, the point which I'm trying to drive here is ensure information security discipline while you're adopting for that. Few last tips. The first one is, Try to adopt this 80-20 rule. I, I guess you guys are business. Most of the people are from business, so you can, you can take away from this. So uh, typically, you need to have certain analytics why you are pinpointing certain things, okay? And then next is, uh, what I believe is, um, open source is about, you are getting something at a very lower cost, wherein if you go for a, another vendor, you have to pay tons of money, right? So you have to contribute back to this, uh, that, that open source community. So that will enhance the overall ecosystem better. So that's what, I'm, I'm trying to mention here, and then the CEO, don't afraid to experience. So while we are coining the word called CEO, it's not just chief executive officer, this is a chief ex experiment officer. That's what I'm trying to um, and a project here. So I try to do two things here. So one is, um, are you taking a decision by flipping a coin, or are you taking a calculated risk? And probably we all will lean towards calculated risk. So finally, give time. So, so these this decisions needs time, careful analysis. So, and case study, I'm, I'm going to skip um, questions. I'm sorry, I rushed it, but I really respect each and every one of your time for your breaks. Questions? have to track the open source software yeah. which we shared or which we have developed. Mm. How do we track it? For example, there are so many open source software which I get it and I develop it. Again, we give it as a GPL. So you, you need to have the version control, don't you? Yeah. It starts at that. And there are little more layers you can always add. Android has thousand versions, you know, right? That says it all. You also have to talk about revenue maximization to contribute to the community. Now, can we monetize your development? Why not? Huh? Um, when you are sharing, right, um, there are ways you can gain those community in terms of um, op open source is more about not only on money, but also, you know, it helps you to brand yourself, right? Most of the things, what you're trying to say, you have a lot of indirect revenue. So there are ways you can, it, it, it's, yeah, exactly. There are smart ways where you can monetize that. 
it, it may not be something like you raise an invoice and then you get the money here, right? There are ways you can monetize. You can segment. Yeah. Is there an open source? Yeah. Probably, uh, just, sorry. Um, maybe I'll connect with you offline. Uh, there are people who give something on the on the start and then for the next level they will always go with the one layer up. That will be a premium service they will introduce and stuff. Yeah, sorry. Is there an open source ERP? Why not? Yes, there are many. There are many. Yeah. I, I can send you the list. Just, um, uh, there is one uh, open source ERP itself. Open source ERP, there is, <laughs> there is a name. Search, search just open source software ERP. Uh, you will get a big name. So an open source ERP is one one on ERP. Yes. Sir, you told us uh, it's the quickest way to reach the market, right? Ah, yeah. Um, uh, take example of uh, web application development. Mm. Uh, if I go for .NET develop .NET uh, Microsoft application or PHP, anyhow I need uh, the development uh, phase, right? Mm. Uh, only because of OSS. Uh, it's going to uh, change the time. time Whatever right? you are getting in a raw mode, it is already having the uh, reasonable level of business requirement handled. So that part of time you are already saving. So it's, it's more about validation rather than developing something from scratch. So that's one piece. There are multiple stages in it. So it, it will overall it will, it will help you. And all these OSs, there is a possibility that many things runs in Agile. Right, and and if you go to an agile approach in terms of iterating mode, so that will give more value proportion. Okay, so um, and I'm trying to close here. Probably it will give you at least 15 minutes time to you know take some tea uh, after almost two hours, isn't it? So you guys deserve for that. Any sort of other questions? I'm I'm available here offline, so I can I can help you out. Thank you guys.